Hi there, readers of Margareta Elementary School. My name is Alana K. Arnold, and I am author of A Boy Called Bat, which your principal, Mr. Wise, tells me you shared together as a one school read. I am so grateful to you all that you're going to read A Boy Called Bat together. I hope you will love the story and the characters as much as I do. And thank you so much again for sharing the book as a community. Take good care. <laughs> All right, Margaret Elementary, it is time for our next One School, One Book, and we are doing a boy called Bat. And I am here at Bat to the Wild with a friend that really is interested in this book, because if you can see from the cover, this boy finds a skunk out in the wild that needs his help, and he has to nurse it back to health to return to the wild, just like what they do here. So I'm gonna read chapter one, because our friend the skunk here wants to hear this first chapter. So I'm gonna read chapter one to you from Back to the Wild with our friend the skunk here. Chapter one, after school. Bixby Alexander Tam stared into the refrigerator trying to decide what to eat. He knew that the longer he took, the more energy he was wasting and Bixby Alexander Tam did not like to waste energy. But he also didn't like to eat leftovers or cheese that had been sliced or any of the yogurt flavors in the fridge. Bat, close the refrigerator door, yelled, Close the refrigerator door, yelled his sister Janie from the kitchen table where she sat cutting out pictures from a pile of old magazines. Janie, he was sure, had eaten all the lemon and vanilla yogurts. And she knew he only liked the creamy ones, not the fruit on the bottom kind. Bat was what almost everyone called Bixby Alexander Tam for a couple of reasons. First, because the initials of his name, B, A, and T, spelled bat. And there were maybe other reasons Bat's sensitive hearing, for one, he didn't like loud sounds. What was so unusual about that? And if Janie's old earmuffs happened to make an outstanding muffling device, was it funny if he liked to wear them? There was also the way that he sometimes flapped his hands when he was nervous or excited or thinking about something interesting. Some of the kids at school seemed to think that was hilarious. And of course, bats have wings, which they flap. So, between the initials and the earmuffs and the hand flapping, the nickname had stuck. And truthfully, Bat didn't mind. Animals were his favorite thing. Better than even vanilla yogurt. Janie, did you eat all the vanillas? Not all of them, Janie answered. She curved the scissors around the bent arm of the boy she was cutting out. I saw you eat at least two or three of them. Did you eat the last vanilla? Yes, said Janie. With a final snip, she freed the shiny paper boy. It was delicious. Of course it was delicious. All the vanillas were delicious. Well, said Bat, closing the refrigerator door a little harder than he needed to. Now there is nothing to eat. I wouldn't say there's nothing to eat, teased Janie. She knew she wasn't supposed to tease him. Well, I would, said Bat. Nothing I want to eat. Then you must not be very hungry. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, after Mom drove Bat from home from school, she had to go back to work for a couple hours. It was Janie's job to watch Bat. Thursdays were the hardest, and today was a Thursday. Make me a snack, Bat demanded. Make me a snack what? Make me a snack now. No, said Janie. Make me a snack, please. I don't have to say please, said Bat. Making me an after school snack is part of your job. You don't have to say please to get someone to do their job. You do if you want them to do it well, said Janie, but she pushed back the magazines and stood up. Bat felt his elbows beginning to bend. He felt his hands getting ready to flap. I'm hungry, he said again. His voice sounded higher. Okay, okay, said Janie. Don't fly away. I'll fix you peanut butter and jelly. Without the crust, Bat said, he felt better already. <laughs> Chapter 2, Bat's Cave. After finishing his snack, Bat went into his room. Bat's room was his favorite place in the whole world. In his room, Bat felt completely comfortable. Here, he knew where everything was. If something was in the wrong place, it was his own fault. 
because no one messed with his room but him. In the rest of their small house, Bat's mom and sister knew to put everything that needed to go to Bat's room in one of three baskets. His clean laundry basket, his book basket, and his miscellaneous stuff basket. Miscellaneous was a great word and one of Bat's favorites. It meant all the extra stuff. So the most miscellaneous stuff basket could have almost anything except clean laundry and books in it. When the baskets were full, Mom placed them in the hallway outside Bat's door. He took them into his room and unloaded them himself. Once Mom had tried to reorganize his dresser drawers because she thought he could use some help. After, when he was so upset he couldn't even speak, she said, I'm sorry, Bat, but your drawers were just a mess. Your hats mixed in with pants and sweaters. I don't know how you find anything. But the drawers weren't a mess. Not at all. If mom had looked more closely, she would have seen that his knit caps were in with the long pants and his sweaters because he always wore those things together on cold days. Shirt, shorts and t-shirts were in another drawer because he wore those things together on warm days. But what about this drawer, mom had asked, pulling open the bottom right drawer, which held a pair of pants, a wool sweater, and two t-shirts. Those are things I never wear, Bat told her when he finally calmed down, because they're itchy and uncomfortable. Then Mom cut the tags out of the t-shirts, and Bat moved them to his warm days drawers. After that, Mom left him to his own devices, as she liked to say. Once in his room, Bat closed the door. There was a sign on the outside that said, please knock. Janie had written it for him because her writing was much neater than his. Janie could do all the hand things better than Bat. Write things, cut things out, smooth peanut butter on bread. The clock told Bat that Mom would be home in 46 minutes. Mom was a veterinarian, which was what Bat intended to be, too, one day. Mostly she treated cats and dogs, but sometimes she had unusual patients. Once she had taken a BB pellet out of the wing of a hawk. The pellet had broken one of the bones, and Mom had done surgery to mend it. She'd brought the x-rays home to show Bat. Why would anyone shoot a hawk? Bat had asked. Do you think they were going to eat it? No, said Mom. Sometimes people do stupid things. She had, very, she had been very angry about the hawk, angrier even than when Bat and Janie got into loud screaming fights. Seeing the x-ray of the hawk's broken wing made Bat angry too. But his room always made him feel better. It had a roll down bamboo window shade and a fine closet full of shelves and pull out trundle and, and a fine closet full of shelves and a pull out trundle in case someday a friend came to spend the night. It had a ceiling fan, a reading lamp, and a rug with a picture of a train track painted in it. Bat felt like looking through his animal encyclopedia, which he often did after school, so he pulled it down from the bookshelf, dropped comfortably onto his beanbag. His stomach was full of sandwich and Mr. Graydon, Grayson hadn't assigned any homework. For this moment, at least, Bat felt perfectly content.